Hey everyone, and welcome to the first video of our brand new electronics tutorial series. It has been long awaited and very much delayed, but we are finally here. My name is Aaron from AX Electronic, and today we are going to start learning about electronics. So before we get into the actual material, I want to talk a little bit more about what we are actually going to be covering. So we're going to start off by covering op amps or operational amplifiers. Then once we kind of tackle all those problems, we're going to move on to diodes, then MOSFETs, and BJTs. Those are both transistors. Okay. Now, those four components are going to make up a lot of electronics knowledge, but the world of electronics is very broad. Okay. It's going to be kind of impossible to learn everything that you need to know, but this is going to give you a very, very solid foundation whenever you continue that journey into more detailed exploration. So we're going to go ahead and get started with operational amplifiers or op amps. So op amp is short for operational amplifier. I'll underline that here. So this definition is a high gain differential amplifier with high input resistance. Now there's a few things in there that I kind of want to pick apart first. So the first thing is going to be high gain. Okay. So this is actually an inbuilt amplifier made with several different electronics components. But because it has some very simple analysis, I wanted to tackle this first because this is going to kind of give you a taste of what's to come later on. Okay, so this is built using several different transistors and electronics components. And with all those transistors, they're actually able to make this high gain differential amplifier. So differential. Differential tells us that it is going to be amplifying or giving gain to some differential signal. So differential just means it's going to be taking the difference between two signals. So you might see that there's two terminals on this op amp here. There's VN plus, there's VN plus there, and then there's VN minus. So those are the two input terminals and the difference between those two signals is going to be amplified. And we'll talk a little bit more in detail later on. The last thing I want to point out here is this high input resistance. Okay, so high input resistance. That tells us that this input resistance is so high, very, very little current is going to flow into any of these terminals, any, any of these input terminals here. So VN minus and VN plus, they have a very, very high input resistance. So for our, for our analysis, we're just going to approximate it as an open circuit, and we're going to say that no current at all flows into either one of these. Now, some very tiny microscopic current will flow in a realistic situation, but most of the time it's so small that it's not going to impact our analysis too greatly. So for this simple analysis, we're just going to assume that there's no current at all flowing into those input terminals. Okay? So let's look at some of these equations that we have here. So this is our transfer function here. So this tells us how this output signal, V out, is related to our input signals, Vn plus and Vn minus. So this is telling us that V out, our output signal, oh, V out here, is related to Vn plus minus Vn minus. So that's that difference that I was talking about. So it's going to be this differential signal times this AV. So that's going to be our voltage gain. So that subscript V means voltage. That's just telling us it's voltage gain. So our V out is going to be an amplified version of the difference between those two inputs. So let's do a quick example real quick. Let's say that on Vn minus, I have zero volts exactly. Now on Vn plus, I have 0.01 volts. Okay, So there is a difference between Vn plus and Vn minus of 0.01 volts. This is a very easy example. So our V out is going to be this 0.01 volts times this AV here. So let's just say our AV is 100 at the very beginning. That means that our V out is going to be one volt. So that's amplifying the difference between those two inputs. Okay. Then like we said, again, the input resistance is very large. We're going to approximate it as an open circuit. Okay. So that's going to be pretty important. No current is going to flow into those terminals. So this is going to give you the background that you need to start solving some of these different problems. So let's talk a little bit more about this gain. So we start off with the same equation. V out is equal to AV times the difference between VN plus and VN minus. Now this AV is very large and it's built that way in the chip for some very specific reasons. So this AV is very large. Usually it's going to be much, much greater than 20,000. Okay. So that just means if we have a one millivolt signal on our input or a one millivolt signal difference on our inputs, then we are going to have a 20 volt signal on our output. So that is amplifying it quite a bit greater than 20,000. And it's likely going to be greater than that just because it has to be much greater than 20,000 for it to be, for it to be considered very, very large. Now, something important that you might see here is that we have two other inputs, VDD and VSS. 
So these are our power inputs. So these devices are active devices, meaning that in order for them to amplify or do all these cool math operations, that there has to be some power input. We're not just creating energy out of nowhere. We have to have that from somewhere. So that's going to be coming from our power inputs. Now, these inputs both give us our input power, and they also set a limit for our output signal. So let's suppose that we have, again, zero volts here. Let me make sure that's clear, zero volts. And we have one millivolt. And let's just say our AV, or our gain, is 20,000 for now. Okay, so our gain is 20,000. So this equation tells us that if we have a one millivolt signal here and 20,000 for AV, that our V out should be 20 volts. Now, we haven't talked about our power inputs yet. So let's say that we have 10 volts and minus 10 volts. Okay, so that's gonna be our power input. We have plus 10 volts on VDD and minus 10 volts on VSS. So that is actually setting the limit for what our output voltage can be. So since our limit is 10 volts and minus 10 volts, we have to stay somewhere in between that range because like we said, we can't create energy out of nowhere. It has to come from somewhere. So this is gonna set our limit. So in this case, our output is going to try to go to 20 volts, but it can't actually do that. So it actually can't hit that 20 volts. So it's gonna be limited by that top rail. So our output in this case would be 10 volts. Okay, so that is summarized in this equation here, showing that our V out, or our output voltage, has to be within VSS and VDD. So it's gonna be greater than, has to be greater than or equal to VSS and less than or equal to VDD. And just a couple of quick notes too, if our inputs are equal, meaning that VN plus is exactly equal to VN minus, then our output's gonna be zero volts. So if this VN plus and VN minus, if this difference is zero volts, doesn't matter how large AV is, anything times zero is going to be zero. So our output will also be zero. So this is what we touched on before. If the inputs are just slightly different, even by just one millivolt, the output is gonna to try to go very, very, very large. Okay, but it's gonna be limited by VDD and VSS. So in this example, even though it wants to be 20 volts on this output, it can't get there. So it's gonna be limited by those rails, 10 volts and minus 10 volts. So our output signal would be 10 volts. So you might be asking yourself before, why did we have a plus 10 volts and a minus 10 volts on our power inputs there? And the reason for that is because usually it's really nice if we have a symmetric input power. So if we, for example, used 10 volts and ground, 10 volts and ground, I'll just use that sign, or that sign for ground, then we're going to be limited to only positive signals. And we'll see later in some of our amplifiers, there can actually be negative signals, okay? So one of the simplest amplifiers is actually called an inverting amplifier. And what it does is that it does provide some gain, but it also inverts our signal. So if our input signal is positive, our output signal is gonna be negative, okay? So usually it's just a little bit easier if we have our inputs and outputs symmetric, or if we have our input power symmetric. So if we have 10 volts and minus 10 volts, that's gonna be a whole lot easier to analyze in the future than having 10 volts in ground. Now that's not to say that you can't have 10 volts in ground, you definitely can. We'll talk about a problem where we don't have a symmetric supply later on, but it does get a little bit more complicated, but we'll tackle that whenever we come to it. Okay. So now I just wanna go over a couple of little examples of some of these op-amp problems. These are gonna be very, very simple. So first thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna try and figure out what voltages we know for a fact. So what voltages we know for a fact. So we know here that our minus terminal, so this VN minus, is connected to ground. So that means that no matter what, VN minus has to be zero volts. Now on our VN plus, we have this sign. So we have a sinusoidal voltage source. So this is a voltage source that is varying with a sinusoidal waveform. So that is going to tell us that it is varying in a little bit of a different way than what we may be used to. So I'm gonna show it on this graph over here. So on this graph, I'm gonna show this sinusoidal waveform, just like this, okay? So this is our Vn plus. So this is our positive input voltage, okay? So what this looks like on our input is just a sinusoidal waveform, okay? Now, let's try and figure out what our output looks like. So let's start from the very, very beginning. So at this very beginning, we start off with a positive input voltage. So that positive input voltage, it could be maybe one millivolt, could be 10 volts, doesn't really matter. So let's just say that it's one volt to make things a little bit easier. So at this very beginning, we have one volt. Now one volt is definitely a lot greater than zero volts. And once we amplify it, this V out is going to saturate or it's going to do what's called hit the rails. 
So it's going to start off hitting the rail. So it's going to immediately jump to VDD. Okay, so it's going to immediately jump up to VDD. So we're going to stay positive. We're going to stay at this positive rail until we finally hit this zero point. So at that zero crossing, we're going to drop down to zero. Now, our signal doesn't stop there. Now we're going to this negative voltage. So now instead of positive one volt, maybe we have negative one volt here. So whenever we have this negative one volt, what's going to happen? Well, now our VN minus is less than our VN, or our VN plus is less than our VN minus. So that means that this signal that we're amplifying, this differential signal, is now negative. So our output is going to try and go as negative as possible. So it's going to hit that negative rail. It's going to continue doing that until it reaches this next zero crossing. Okay, so this point is VSS. So this could be minus 10 volts or it could be whatever our VSS is. Now once it crosses here again, it's going to go back into positive. We're going to go back to this VDD and then we're just going to keep on repeating this. Okay, so we're just going to keep on repeating that uh, no matter what our signal looks like. As long as our signal is continuing this way, it's just going to keep continuing this pattern. So let's look at another problem. So now this is kind of flipped. So now we have zero volts on our positive input and this sinusoidal waveform on our negative input. So I'm going to say Vn minus. And let's just use the same look in sinusoidal waveform. So I'm going to try and draw it as best as I can. Okay. So this is our new sinusoidal waveform being applied to Vn minus. So let's try and figure out what V out looks like. Okay. So I'll write V out here just so we know that this is our output voltage. So at the very beginning, we're starting off at zero because we're starting off, they're both equal. So starting off, they're both equal. And then our Vn minus starts going positive, okay? So now if we have, we have Vn plus minus Vn minus times our AV, which is really large. So Vn plus we know is zero volts, but our Vn minus is positive. So let's just say positive one volt. So if we have zero minus a positive one volt, that's going to give us a negative value. And a negative value times this very large gain is going to cause this thing to saturate. So we're going to start off at this zero point, and then we're immediately going to go to VSS. Okay, so we're immediately going to hit our VSS down here. And then, like before, whenever we hit this zero crossing, we're going to come back. Now our voltage on our negative terminal is going negative. So instead of a positive one volt here, we're going to have a negative one volt. So now zero volts minus a negative is the same thing as plus a positive. So zero minus a negative is going to give us a positive. So if we have a positive on our, uh, we have a positive in this parentheses times a large value, that's going to cause it to saturate and hit our top rail. So it's going to, whoop, it's going to go all the way up to VDD and then go back to that zero crossing. Okay? So it's going to stay at this VDD and it's going to just going to continue to cycle over and over again. Okay, so it's just like before, except now we're flipped. So if we look at our previous one, we have what looks like kind of a square wave, except we start off positive, then go negative, and then go back to positive. On this one, we're starting off negative because this sinusoid is going to our negative input terminal. So we start off negative, go to positive, and then go back to negative. Okay, so the only thing that's different is that this one is just flipped around. Instead of getting our input sinusoid to our positive terminal, we're going to our negative terminal. So now let's try a little bit more of a simpler one. So compared to this one, this last one, this one's gonna be a lot simpler. So let's just say that this is one volt and it's just a DC voltage, okay? So we know that this has to be one volt here and we know that this is zero volts because it's tied to ground. So now our VN plus is just one volt. Here, and I'm gonna try and make it as straight of a line as I can. That's not a very good one though. So let's try it one more time. Okay, so this is our one volt. Okay, so let's write our equation one more time. So AV, which is our very large gain, times VN plus minus VN minus. So VN minus is zero, VN plus is one. So this is going to be a positive value here. So this is going to be a positive. So a positive times a very large gain is gonna give us a very large positive on the output, but we're limited by the rails. So our output is just going to stick right at VDD, okay? If we look at one more problem, we can see we just flipped this one around again. So now our Vn minus is the same. Let's just stick to one volt because that makes it easier. So let's stick to one volt. And write our equation one more time. Av times Vn plus minus Vn minus. So now our Vn plus is zero. 
So it's zero volts minus this one volt. That ends up being a negative number. So it's negative one volts there times this very large value. It's going to try, try and make a very large negative output. But we're still limited by this VSS, okay? So our output is going to look something like this. We're limited by VSS, okay? So until what's inside this parentheses changes to go positive or negative, we're gonna stay at this minus VSS. Okay, so this is the very simplest introduction to op amps possible. We tackled some of the basic equations like the op amp transfer function. In the next couple of videos, we're gonna start looking at how we can maybe, maybe make these a little bit more useful. So we're gonna talk about comparators, we're also going to talk about amplifiers and we're going to talk about oscillators and all of them are going to be using this op amps and we're going to be using some of the circuit knowledge that we've developed previously in our lecture analysis videos. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more content. Other than that, thank you for watching.